西形小結高安茨城県土浦市出身 It was a shame to see Dai Aisho flounder in September, having shown so much pre tournament promise. After that dismal five win showing, he asked a reputable surgeon to remove damaged cartilage from his injured right elbow. Would that be just the tonic he needed to recover Orzeki level form in November? He made a firm statement of intent against fellow Orzeki contender Takano Sho on opening day, leading with the left. But confident enough to use the right for the winning move. And by day two, the right was almost back to normal, fully contributing to the barrage aimed at Mitake Umi's head, then happy to capitalize on his stoop and suspect balance. But on day three, his tactics were absurd. Having used the right so well in the initial charge, why did he see the need to sidestep? Thankfully, it was easy to bounce back on day four against an injured Shodai unwilling to put any weight on his ankle. But his second Ozeki match the next day was destined to be tougher, best friend notwithstanding. Takakesho's thick neck almost crumpled his poor hands, his left elbow was expertly parried, and his chest was constantly attacked. And despite a more impactful Tachi Ai on day six, he met with a determined drilling operation from hungry Onosho. Look at how that right just never stops trying to spin him sideways, and eventually does. After that came a mid tournament surge. Superior stamina got him through a seesaw push and pull battle with Saitama Sakai senior Myo Giryu on day seven, which saw both men near collapse. And Superior Tactics delivered him a huge win on day eight against unbeaten Teru no Fuji, by whose left arm he was loath to be clamped, and by whose wobbly knees he could not be resisted. It was a confidence booster which makes me want to go forward more aggressively from now on, he told reporters, and he kept his word. A much lighter Wakatakakage was knocked forwards and flicked backwards with consummate ease. Then Okinomi was kept at bay with the left before the right weighed in. Note the slight lean to Okinomi's right to distance the belt from his potent left. Then an almighty bounce from the knees saw him smash Tamawashi's walls at the third attempt and secure a vital eighth win with four days to spare. I just told myself to relentlessly advance, he said after that match. The Tachi Ai is crucial, but I was also paying real attention to the second and third step, and just attacking with my legs. Those legs often end up in parallel, though. When he can knock foes away, it's fine, but when he can't, it's a weakness. Takayasu providing Exhibit A. Takara Fuji took a different approach, parrying the leading left, then working feverishly on the right. Brushing, pinching, then finally getting inside. Another left hammer and right chop on Ryuden returned him to winning ways on day 14, though, giving him a shot at double figures in his final match with Saitama Sakai Jr., Koto Shoho. The youngster's flexible frame lessened the impact of his truly ferocious thrusts, then had his left arm under constant fire from a groping right. A smart belt throw at the rope sent both men into the audience, 
and a rematch was called. It's fair to say Dai Aisho was slaughtered at that Tachiai, but needed no more proof that his right was on the mend. Poetically, it showed its recovery by landing him a tenth win, which presumably fulfills his wish for a return to Sanyaku level. January should see him at Komusubi West, and thus with a real chance to make big impressions early on against the Yokozuna and Ozeki. What this man lacks in technical variety, he makes up for with sheer bravery and tenacity. Unless you're an elite sumo wrestler at the very top of your game, you'll need a gang with several baseball bats to take this guy down.